I can find uh, over 500 separate items. Uh, one of the most interesting is the stagecoach, which is one of the stagecoaches uh, from the first uh, decade of the Roundup. It's, the, it's an original. It is an original, unrestored stagecoach. Wow. And uh, it's, it's quite stunning. It's actually used in the Westward Hope Parade, which is part of the Roundup every year. And I have to say, it's in pretty good condition. It's been through a lot, I can imagine. So. Yeah. Uh, we don't know for sure that it was used in the early stagecoach races, but okay. I will say those races were among the most uh, exciting and dangerous events that they used to have. And you were also telling me that if you're not interested in rodeo, then you shouldn't not come to see this because there's so much more to it than just rodeo. When I worked on the book, I, I quickly uh, came to realize that the Roundup is about much more than mm -hmm. the rodeo that occurs. There's the parade, there's the involvement of the uh, tribal people, and uh, many other uh, facets to it than just the competition, which is in itself is interesting. All right, so what is our next stop? We're going to go to what's uh, called the Hotel de Count Punch. What do you have, Michael? Uh, I have a pair of eights. Okay, I, I don't I, play cards. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're sitting in yeah. right now? This is actually from Hotel de Cow Punch. Yes, in fact, this table where cowboys play poker when they're in Pendleton for the roundup is, is from the Hotel de Cow Punch, which is sort of a joking name. It's essentially a crash pad for professional rodeo cowboys. It's not a five star hotel. No. <laughs> Judging by the blanket there, maybe not so much. It, it's a place where cowboys can stay for free uh -huh. whenever uh, they're in town. And it's run by Severe Brothers Saddlery, and it occupies the top floor of their uh, workshop. So when the exhibit is over, all of these pieces are going to go back to the hotel. Right. These are straight from the Hotel de Cow Punch, a small part of it. Wow. A, a, a replica, if you will. That's amazing. And the hats, let's talk a little bit about those cowboy hats up there. Well, yeah, these hats are on the wall normally at the hotel. And this kind of, all of these hats were worn in the Roundup Arena mm -hmm. and typically show damage from a fall. Wow, so it's the real, it's the real thing. It's yeah. the real thing. All right, what's our next stop, our last stop? We're going to look at uh, how the tribal people have contributed to the Roundup over the last 100 years. Wow, Michael, this is so beautiful. Everything that we're looking at was originally worn at the Roundup. Yes, uh, the tribal people, uh, there are three tribes in the Pendleton area. Mm -hmm. They've been a key part of the Roundup since the, its beginning in 1910. And so all of these pieces at one point or another were actually worn. Well, this outfit uh, on the female mannequin was is, belonged to Melissa Parr, mm -hmm. who was a five-time American Indian uh, beauty contest winner. She was queen of the Roundup in 1932. Wow, that's amazing. And we also have a little tent going on here. Um, I'm guessing that the pieces inside that tent are also original, maybe minus the sleeping bag. <laughs> well, what the, what the teepee represents is every year for 100 years, the tribal people have come to the Roundup grounds and uh -huh. camped. And so any typical year, there's 200 to 300 teepees uh, throughout the week of the Roundup. And aside from what you've shown us, there's so much more to see. What else would you say really makes up this exhibit? You were talking a little bit about uh, the cowgirls yes. and how we can uh, take a look at some of what they originally wore as well. I don't think a lot of people realize that uh, cowgirls in the first uh, two decades of the Roundup were uh, incredibly popular and they competed in the same dangerous events as, as the men. They were really America's first uh, female professional athletes and they were celebrated in uh, New York City, London, Australia and then um, uh, their role came to an end in 1929 when a woman was killed at the Roundup in the bucking contest.